All right, so at this point, clearly I've taken the leap on the Steam Deck, and one of the things that I mentioned in that impressions video was that as much as I had fun checking out, like, you know, the new shiny games and stuff that really is like a, you know, graphical showcase for what the system can do, I've almost had more fun playing older games on the system. Now, when I say older, I don't necessarily mean, like, retro, right? I'm not talking about, like, you know, NES era or Game Boy or anything like that, but rather games that are just recently considered older, right? Stuff from, like, the 2010s or mid-2000s, which, honestly, maybe I'm toeing the line there. Actually, it might be considered retro, at this point, but nonetheless, the point is, I've had a whole lot of fun not just playing like, you know, the latest and greatest on the Steam Deck, but also diving into some slightly older games that I just haven't played in years. So today what I wanted to do was make a video about why I think older games play so great on the Steam Deck and why I think it's just particularly well suited for playing those older games, and then a few of the games that I've been exploring lately as I've gotten more and more familiar with the Steam Deck itself. But first let's go ahead and talk about why old games are so great on the Steam Deck. And for starters, there's just a whole lot of games on Steam that even if they aren't verified, play great. And for me, as someone who's way more of a console gamer than a PC gamer, it's kind of awesome to play games that at the time I only got to play it at maybe a marginal or medium quality setting like on the Xbox 360 for example and then see them brought up to modern standards where they play much much better or Maybe, you know, PC players at the time were just experiencing that quality already and I just never had the privilege, but now that I have an easy way to get access to those PC games, they play a lot better than the way I remember. Take Dead Space, for example. I'm pretty sure that when I originally played that on the 360, it was only running at something like 30 frames per second, but now I can play it at a rock solid 60 and have an amazing time guiding Isaac through all kinds of ridiculous horrors. Plus graphics and performance enhancements aside from just like this massive amount of older titles that you can find on Steam, it's also really nice that you can just do quickly suspend those games and then bring them right back up. I know that like you can do that on the Switch, but it's kind of cool the games that never got ported to the Switch that I can now enjoy thanks to like the PC inclinations of a device like the Steam Deck, that I can not only jump into those games, if I only have a few minutes to play that I can, you know, sort of get my game time in, put it to sleep, and then immediately bring it back up whenever I'm ready to resume. It's a small thing, but it's a feature that certainly makes some of those larger, older games a lot more palatable, so I'm really glad that Valve was smartly able to implement this feature and make sure that people could instantly, you know, get right back into the action, but just as quickly get out of it if they need to, which honestly is probably essential for a portable gaming system. Not to mention when I just say that there are tons and tons of older games that you can play on Steam, the cool thing is those older games usually are dirt cheap. That was the case for me with Dead Space, and there were just a lot of titles like old Clancy games or Soul Reaver, I could probably think of like a dozen other ones right now, but the point is games that did not come out in like the late 2010s or 2020 and later, a lot of those games are just like a few dollars, and a lot of them still hold up really well today. So it's cool that aside from just, you know, the amazing deals that you can get whenever there's like the Steam Summer Sale going on or something like that, a lot of the experiences that are older that you might be inclined to play or revisit for nostalgia's sake is not going to break the bank if you want to do that. But by far, I think my favorite part of playing these older games is that they do not chew up battery life nearly as quickly as modern games do. Seriously, as I mentioned in like that last video, Horizon Zero Dawn looks great and it plays great on the Steam Deck. Nobody's disputing that. But again, absent playing directly connected to a power outlet or having like a beefy power bank with you, you're only going to get about an hour and a half to two hours of gameplay before you have to stop, which depending on your inclination and how long you want those play sessions to last, that might be a good thing for you if you don't want to get, you know, stuck like I do or I procrastinate. I'm like, oh, I'll just play Steam Deck for six hours. But realistically speaking, it's nice that these older titles will let you to play, you know, five, seven, eight hours potentially in some cases, depending on how taxing it is on the GPU. So it's really cool that not only are there a ton of games that are cheap that perform better than you remember, but on top of all of that, you can play them for longer because they just don't, you know, just tap into the full breadth of the Steam Deck's power and, you know, demand in turn a huge amount of power consumption that would limit your play time. So this is just a few other reasons that I'm really enjoying playing older titles on the Steam Deck, which again, I was completely surprised by because I figured I would naturally gravitate to just like the latest and greatest, but as it turns out, not the case. I've just gotten a lot of fun diving back into some nostalgic old titles that I personally enjoyed. Uh, and I just wanna go through a few of those that I've played on the Steam Deck and I can tell you they run really well. Uh, the first one will be Metal Gear Rising, which I believe came out right around the same time as The Last of Us, right around 2013, I wanna say. And that game for me was one that I've played only briefly and then it got quickly overshadowed by The Last of Us because that came out and I was just completely obsessed with it when it first dropped. So now I have the ability to go back and revisit Metal Gear Rising, which I grabbed for like $6.99 on sale and it plays great. It plays at 60 frames per second, which I believe it did hit the 60 frames per second target uh, back during the 360 days. I could be wrong on that. 
But still, the fact that I can play it in the handheld mode and just drop in, drop out whenever I want, and just kind of engage all this bonkers ride and sword play action is a whole lot of fun. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy this as much as I would a traditional Metal Gear experience, as I understand it's not an especially long game. I think you can beat it in about six to eight hours. I think I'm about an hour or two in at this point, but it has been fun. Again, I mean, like, how can you not have fun just being like a cyborg ninja, right? It's a cool premise on its own, but yeah, that's one of the older games that I've been playing that performs great, and again, battery life is totally stellar on it. Now, going back a little bit older from 2013, I want to say it was 2008, 2009, I think, when Bully came out. I played and beat Bully on the 360, and I absolutely loved every second of it, right? It's like, it's like baby's first Grand Theft Auto is what it is. It's like you have this big open world, except it's kind of been shrunk down just a little bit, right? It's, it's, it's just like the, you know, the kids version of GTA, essentially. And I like it because despite all of the controversy that it started back then when it first came out, uh, you can actually play as Jimmy and just be a really good dude in Bully, and that's typically how I play him anyways. But it's fun, it's ridiculous, it's got, uh, you know, Rockstar's typical sense of humor just rolled right into it. And I love open world games in the handheld format anyways, but going back and revisiting Bullworth Academy just like years and years later has been a whole lot of fun. And it runs really well. The only snag that I hit with that was I did have trouble getting the Xbox 360 controller recognized, but that's really not a huge deal. I was just trying to get some uh, some B-roll in docked mode, so it wasn't like a, a huge problem or anything. So I plan to play through it again uh, just in handheld mode. But yeah, Bully is a fun game. It's a crime that we never got a sequel to that. I hope at some point we do. I've heard people say like, oh, you just couldn't do it in today's climate. Maybe that's true. I'm not sure, but nonetheless, the original Bully is still really fun. Runs just fine. I was able to get a consistent 30 frames per second. I probably could have gotten 60 if I had uh, optimized it a little bit more or tweaked the settings, but so far it's smooth. It looks great on the handheld screen, and I'm looking forward to diving into that one a lot more. Next up, going back to 2013, Bioshock Infinite. Now, I've played uh, Bioshock 1 and 2 through uh, just a few times through the years, but Bioshock Infinite, I only played and beat one time. Uh, I've actually purchased it, I think, on a couple of different systems, but it just seemed like one that would have really nice graphics for me to check out, and I was curious if, because it would probably strain the GPU more, if I would have, like, a major hit to battery life, but... As I've played Bioshock Infinite for a few hours so far, it seems like it's held up really well. I mean, the, the battery life does not show me that it's going to drop down to like, you know, an hour and a half or two hours, despite the fact that it's definitely a prettier game than some of the other older titles that I've been playing. But rather, it seems like you could comfortably play a game like Bioshock Infinite for about five to six hours. And Bioshock Infinite is a gorgeous game. And the fact that we do have another Bioshock in development has kind of made me nostalgic to revisit that place, especially given the wider implications of the Bioshock narrative that were set up in Bioshock Infinite if you played that through to completion. So yeah, Infinite performs great, it looks great, it plays great, and honestly, just my nostalgia for that series and the fact that we've got another one coming out led me to go ahead and explore it on the Steam Deck. And I'm glad that I did because, again, it's one of those games that will give you tons and tons of battery life and it's just a great game in its own right. I've also gotten back into Jet Set Radio again, which is fun, although I will say the controls don't feel quite as smooth to me as they did back in the Dreamcast era, but I'm a sucker for cell shaded graphics and I absolutely love the style of the Jet Set games. Not to mention it has an infinitely listenable soundtrack, plus it's just kind of rad to just skate around and start tagging up random places around the city while you try to evade the cops. And finally, while we're on the subject of cell shading, I think this is cell shaded, but Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Ultimate, I snatched this up for like four bucks, I hadn't played it in forever, and I thought I had this for the Vita, but apparently I don't, or maybe I traded it in or, or lent it to somebody, I can't remember, but it was definitely not in my collection. So yeah, I could have gone for Infinite, I guess, but I don't know why, but there's something about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite that just not grab me in the same way, and Marvel vs. Capcom 3, felt more like 2 to me, which to me was a lot more appealing. I'm not saying that Infinite was bad, I know they tried some different things. I don't think you could do character switching in that anymore, I think that was one of the things that felt weird to me, but yeah, given the fact that I'm a huge Marvel fan anyways, and I haven't really tried any fighting games yet on the Steam Deck, and I was a little bit concerned about like how will that D-pad actually feel, but and even though I'm definitely not like some tournament grade you know, fighting game player or anything like that, it's still a fun game to mess around with. And the fact that it has a Marvel coat of paint is a huge draw for me because again, I'm a huge Marvel fan and have been ever since I was about eight years old. Me and my dad used to collect comics together. And uh, I'm happy to say that also performs really well in the system. But again, most of these older games are going to do exactly that because in the modern age, there are games that are doing way more graphically speaking than what we would have gotten from a game from like 2009 or 2010. But still, it's just one of those things that I was not expecting from the Steam Deck. It, it just, it did not occur to me whenever I first started playing it that I would naturally want to dive into games that were you know like 
10, 15 years old, I figured I would be way more interested in something like, you know, the Resident Evil 3 remake or, you know, um, the certainly Elden Ring, which actually I still need to get that, uh, or Sekiro, you know, something more modern uh, that would be, you know, a more taxing experience for the hardware. But ultimately, no, it's been great diving into a bunch of old games and they play great on the Steam Deck. And that was just like an unexpected benefit of, you know, taking the leap and picking up this system. So anyways, what about you? Have you been playing any older games on your Steam Deck? If so, and you have any recommendations of something that I may have never played in my own gaming history, I would love to hear about it. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch. It means a lot. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.